executive chef Nicholas Armstrong from Ciro's Restaurant at 885 2nd Avenue in Manhattan. And this is what desserts I can make with oatmeal. I've got some cranberry juice. I'm gonna go ahead and add just uh, a little bit of water, thin it out. Because I'm gonna come in with my oatmeal. You wanna get your pan nice and hot, your liquid nice and hot. You're gonna wanna kinda cook the snot out of the, the oatmeal itself. You really want it to be able to bind later on when you go to make a loaf out of it. Add a little more water, give that a nice stir. We'll let that simmer for a while. So as this is cooking, I'm gonna go ahead and add in about a cup of sugar. And I have here some apricot jam, about a half a cup or so. Just mix that in, get it incorporated. Now you're gonna to wanna to keep a pitcher of uh, hot water here, just so when the oatmeal itself cooks down, you can keep uh, replenishing the water so it doesn't dry out and burn on you. I'm just gonna let that keep cooking. Now that you can see the oatmeal is really starting to get a cook on it, I'm gonna go ahead and fold in some, uh, some of the elements here. I've got some sliced uh, almond. I've got some fresh berries. I usually try to put these in as late as possible just so that the, the berries and the almonds uh, maintain their, uh, their texture. I'll just incorporate that throughout. You can go ahead and take that off the heat. As you can see, the oatmeal's been uh, broken down, so it should be able to solidify itself when we set it up in the pan. All right, as you can see, I got a half uh, hotel pan here. I got it lined with some parchment paper. I'm just gonna go ahead and put a, a little uh, pan coating spray to keep it from sticking. You can go right in, nice and hot. I'll just kind of spread that out there. Another piece of parchment here. Give that a nice spray. Put it right over the top, and we'll just give it a nice firm press. We're gonna wanna refrigerate this for at least two to three hours or so, just so it'll hold up for us. Okay, so what I have here is your finished product. It's set up, it's nice and firm. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out, put it on the board, we'll make some cuts. I like to do nice cubes. Just trim the edges here, save that for later to eat. Save this piece for our plate, reserve the rest for later. Go ahead and cut nice size cubes. I'm gonna go ahead and put these on a sizzle platter because I am going to brulee the tops of these. For those of you that don't know what bruleeing is, bruleeing is just, um, I'm gonna caramelize some sugar on top with a uh, propane torch. Got a little sugar in the raw here. I find that that usually works best for this application. A nice high heat. I wanna melt that sugar nice and evenly, if possible. Uh, now we should be ready to go to plating. This is a uh, cactus pear gelée sitting on the bottom here. It's a really, really exotic looking dish. First thing I'm gonna do, is I'm just gonna plate the oatmeal. Kinda of like to span it out in a uh, mosaic style, if you will. And next thing, I have uh, some tapioca multidextrin with some peanut butter and pretzel. I'm just gonna go ahead and put a little on each. And you know, this is actually a rendition from a restaurant where I got my start called the Country Corner Cafe in upstate New York, Saratoga Springs. They actually fry theirs, which is another option. I got a little bit of whipped cream here. Just put a little whipped cream right on top. And to finish the dish off, I'm gonna go ahead. I have a Granny Smith apple here. Just gonna give it a slice, give it a little freshness, place it around the dish, just kind of wherever. And the plate is ready to be eaten. This has been Executive Chef Nicholas Armstrong from Ciro's Restaurant at 885 2nd Avenue in Manhattan. And this is what desserts I can make with oatmeal. And remember folks, Cooking is all about the flavor.